Julia Kristeva French, Kisteva, Bulgarian, Yulia Kresteva born 24 June 1941 is a Bulgarian French philosopher, literary critic, psychoanalyst, feminist, and, most recently, novelist, who has lived in France since the mid-1960s. She is now a professor emeritus at the University Paris Diderot. The author of more than 30 books, including Powers of Horror, Tales of Love, Black Sun, Depression and Melancholia, Proust and the Sense of Time, and the trilogy Female Genius, she has been awarded Commander of the Legion of Honor, Commander of the Order of Merit, the Holberg International Memorial Prize, the Hannah Arendt Prize, and the Vision 97 Foundation Prize, awarded by the Havel Foundation. Kristeva became influential in international critical analysis, cultural studies and feminism after publishing her first book, Samayatik, in 1969. Her sizable body of work includes books and essays which address intertextuality, the semiotic, and abjection, in the fields of linguistics, literary theory and criticism, psychoanalysis, biography and autobiography, political and cultural analysis, art and art history. She is prominent in structuralist and poststructuralist thought. Kristeva is also the founder of the Simone de Beauvoir Prize Committee. Life Born in Sliven, Bulgaria to Christian parents, Kristeva is the daughter of a church accountant. Kristeva and her sister attended a francophone school run by Dominican nuns. Kristeva became acquainted with the work of Mikhail Bakhtin at this time in Bulgaria. Kristeva went on to study at the University of Sofia, and while a postgraduate there obtained a research fellowship that enabled her to move to France in December 1965, when she was 24. She continued her education at several French universities, studying under Lucien Goldman and Roland Barthes, among other scholars. On August 2, 1967, Kristeva married the novelist Philippe Sollers, née Philippe Joyot. Kristeva taught at Columbia University in the early 1970s, and remains a visiting professor. She has also published under the married name Julia Joyo. Topic. Work After joining the Tel Quell group founded by Sollers, Kristeva focused on the politics of language and became an active member of the group. She trained in psychoanalysis, and earned her degree in 1979. In some ways, her work can be seen as trying to adapt a psychoanalytic approach to the poststructuralist criticism. For example, her view of the subject, and its construction, shares similarities with Sigmund Freud and Lacan. However, Kristeva rejects any understanding of the subject in a structuralist sense, instead, she favors a subject always, in process, or on trial. In this way, she contributes to the post-structuralist critique of essentialized structures, whilst preserving the teachings of psychoanalysis. She traveled to China in the 1970s and later wrote about Chinese women 1977. Topic. The semiotic and the symbolic One of Kristeva's most important contributions is that signification is composed of two elements, the symbolic and the semiotic, the latter being distinct from the discipline of semiotics founded by Ferdinand de Saussure. As explained by Augustine Perumalil, Kristeva's semiotic is closely related to the infantile pre-Oedipal referred to in the works of Freud, Otto Rank, Melanie Klein, British object relation psychoanalysis, and Lacan's pre-mirror stage. It is an emotional field, tied to the instincts, which dwells in the fissures and prosody of language rather than in the denotative meanings of words. Furthermore, according to Birgit Schippers, the semiotic is a realm associated with the musical, the poetic, the rhythmic, and that which lacks structure and meaning. It is closely tied to the feminine and represents the indifferentiated state of the pre-mirror stage infant. Upon entering the mirror stage, the child learns to distinguish between self and other, and enters the realm of shared cultural meaning, known as the symbolic. In Desire in Language 1980, Kristeva describes the symbolic as the space in which the development of language allows the child to become a speaking subject, and to develop a sense of identity separate from the mother. This process of separation is known as abjection, whereby the child must reject and move away from the mother in order to enter into the world of language, culture, meaning, and the social. This realm of language is called the symbolic and is contrasted with the semiotic in that it is associated with the masculine, the law, and structure. 
Kristeva departs from Lacan in the idea that even after entering the symbolic, the subject continues to oscillate between the semiotic and the symbolic. Therefore, rather than arriving at a fixed identity, the subject is permanently in process. Because female children continue to identify to some degree with the mother figure, they are especially likely to retain a close connection to the semiotic. This continued identification with the mother may result in what Kristeva refers to in Black Sunday 1989 as melancholia depression, given that female children simultaneously reject and identify with the mother figure. It has also been suggested e Creed, 1993, that the degradation of women and women's bodies in popular culture and particularly, for example, in slasher films emerges because of the threat to identity that the mother's body poses. It is a reminder of time spent in the indifferentiated state of the semiotic, where one has no concept of self or identity. After abjecting the mother, subjects retain an unconscious fascination with the semiotic, desiring to reunite with the mother, while at the same time fearing the loss of identity that accompanies it. Slasher films thus provide a way for audience members to safely reenact the process of abjection by vicariously expelling and destroying the mother figure. Kristeva is also known for her adoption of Plato's idea of the Kora, meaning, a nourishing maternal space. Shippers, 2011. Kristeva's idea of the Kora has been interpreted in several ways, as a reference to the uterus, as a metaphor for the relationship between the mother and child, and as the temporal period preceding the mirror stage. In her essay Motherhood according to Giovanni Bellini from Desire in Language 1980, Kristeva refers to the Kora as a non-expressive totality formed by drives and their stases in a motility that is full of movement as it is regulated. She goes on to suggest that it is the mother's body that mediates between the Kora and the symbolic realm. The mother has access to culture and meaning, yet also forms a totalizing bond with the child. Kristeva is also noted for her work on the concept of intertextuality. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Anthropology and Psychology. Kristeva argues that anthropology and psychology, or the connection between the social and the subject, do not represent each other, but rather follow the same logic, the survival of the group and the subject. Furthermore, in her analysis of Oedipus, she claims that the speaking subject cannot exist on his, her own, but that he, she, stands on the fragile threshold as if stranded on account of an impossible demarcation. Powers of Horror, p. 85. In her comparison between the two disciplines, Kristeva claims that the way in which an individual excludes the abject mother as a means of forming an identity, is the same way in which societies are constructed. On a broader scale, cultures exclude the maternal and the feminine, and by this come into being. <laughs> Feminist Kristeva has been regarded as a key proponent of French feminism together with Simone de Beauvoir, Hélène Sixis, and Luce Rigoré. Kristeva has had a remarkable influence on feminism and feminist literary studies in the US and the UK, as well as on readings into contemporary art although her relation to feminist circles and movements in France has been quite controversial. Kristeva made a famous disambiguation of three types of feminism in Women's Time. In New Maladies of the Soul 1993, while rejecting the first two types, including that of Beauvoir, her stands are sometimes considered rejecting feminism altogether. Kristeva proposed the idea of multiple sexual identities against the joint code of unified feminine language. <laughs> Denunciation of identity politics Kristeva argues her writings have been misunderstood by American feminist academics. In Kristeva's view, it was not enough simply to dissect the structure of language in order to find its hidden meaning. Language should also be viewed through the prisms of history and of individual psychic and sexual experiences. This post-structuralist approach enabled specific social groups to trace the source of their oppression to the very language they used. However, Kristeva believes that it is harmful to posit collective identity above individual identity, and that this political assertion of sexual, ethnic, and religious identities is ultimately totalitarian. Novelist Kristeva wrote a number of novels that resemble detective stories. While the books maintain narrative suspense and develop a stylized surface, her readers also encounter ideas intrinsic to her theoretical projects. 
Her characters reveal themselves mainly through psychological devices, making her type of fiction mostly resemble the later work of Dostoevsky. Her fictional oeuvre, which includes The Old Man and the Wolves, Murder in Byzantium, and Possessions, while often allegorical, also approaches the autobiographical in some passages, especially with one of the protagonists of Possessions, Stephanie Delacour, a French journalist, who can be seen as Christova's alter ego. Murder in Byzantium deals with themes from Orthodox Christianity and politics, she referred to it as, a kind of anti-Da Vinci code. Topic. Honors For her, "...innovative explorations of questions on the intersection of language, culture and literature," Kristova was awarded the Holberg International Memorial Prize in 2004. She won the 2006 Hannah Arendt Prize for Political Thought. She has also been awarded Commander of the Legion of Honor, Commander of the Order of Merit, and the Václav Havel Prize. Topic. Scholarly reception Roman Jakobson said that, "...both readers and listeners, whether agreeing or in stubborn disagreement with Julia Kristeva, feel indeed attracted to her contagious voice and to her genuine gift of questioning generally adopted axioms, and her contrary gift of releasing various damned questions from their traditional question marks." Roland Barthes comments that, Julia Kristeva changes the place of things, she always destroys the last prejudice, the one you thought you could be reassured by, could be take sick pride in, what she displaces is the already said, the déjà dit, i.e., the instance of the signified, i.e., stupidity, what she subverts as authority the authority of monologic science, of filiation." Ian Allman criticizes Kristeva's ethnocentrism. He cites Gayatri Spivak's conclusion that Kristeva's book about Chinese women belongs to that very 18th century that Kristeva scorns after pinpointing the brief, expansive, often completely ungrounded way in which she writes about 2,000 years of a culture she is unfamiliar with. Almond notes the absence of sophistication in Kristeva's remarks concerning the Muslim world and the dismissive terminology she uses to describe its culture and believers. He criticizes Kristeva's opposition which juxtaposes Islamic societies against democracies where life is still fairly pleasant by pointing out that Kristeva displays no awareness of the complex and nuanced debate ongoing among women theorists in the Muslim world, and that she does not refer to anything other than the Rushdie fatwa in dismissing the entire Muslim faith as reactionary and persecutory. In Intellectual Impostures, 1997, physics professors Alan Sokol and Jean Brickmont devote a chapter to Kristeva's use of mathematics in her writings. They argue that Kristeva fails to show the relevance of the mathematical concepts she discusses to linguistics and the other fields she studies, and that no such relevance exists. Topic alleged collaboration with the communist regime in Bulgaria In 2018, Bulgaria's State Dossier Commission announced that Kristeva had been an agent for the Committee for State Security under the code name Sabina. She was supposedly recruited in June 1971. Five years earlier she left Bulgaria to study in France. Under the communist regime, any Bulgarian who wanted to travel abroad had to apply for an exit visa and get an approval from the Ministry of Interior. The process was long and difficult because anyone who made it to the West could declare political asylum. Kristeva has called the allegations grotesque and false. On 30 March, the State Dossier Commission began publishing online the entire set of documents reflecting Kristeva's activity as an informant of the former Committee for State Security. She vigorously denies the charges, Neil Asherson wrote, the recent fuss about Julia Kristeva boils down to nothing much, although it has suited some to inflate it into a fearful scandal. But the reality shown in her files is trivial. After settling in Paris in 1965, she was cornered by Bulgarian spooks who pointed out to her that she still had a vulnerable family in the home country. So she agreed to regular meetings over many years, in the course of which she seems to have told her handlers nothing more than gossip about Aragon, Bataille and Co., from the left bank cafés, stuff they could have read in Le Canard and Chene. The combined intelligence value of its product and her reports was almost zero. The Bulgarian security men seem to have known they were being played. But never mind, they could impress their boss by showing him a real international celeb on their books. Topic selected writings Samayatake, Recherches pour une Samanalyse, Paris, Edition du Seuil, 1969. 
English translation, Desire in Language, A Semiotic Approach to Literature and Art, Oxford, Blackwell, 1980, La Révolution du Langage Poétique, L'Avant Garde à la fin du XIXe siècle, L'Atriamont et Mallarmé, Paris, Editions du Suil, 1974. Abridged English translation, Revolution in Poetic Language, New York, Columbia University Press, 1984, about Chinese women. London, Boyars, 1977. Powers of Horror, an Essay on Abjection. New York, Columbia University Press, 1982. The Christopher Reader, ed. Toral Moi Oxford, Basil Blackwell, 1986. In the Beginning Was Love, Psychoanalysis and Faith. New York, Columbia University Press, 1987. Black Sun, Depression and Melancholia. New York, Columbia University Press, 1989. Strangers to Ourselves. New York, Columbia University Press, 1991. Nations Without Nationalism. New York, Columbia University Press, 1993. New Maladies of the Soul. New York, Columbia University Press, 1995. Experiencing the Phallus as Extraneous, Parallax Issue 8, 1998. Crisis of the European Subject. New York, Other Press, 2000. Reading the Bible. In, David Jobling, Tina Pippin and Ronald Schleifer, eds. The Postmodern Bible Reader, pp. 92-101. Oxford, Blackwell, 2001. Female Genius, Life, Madness, Words, Hannah Arendt, Melanie Klein, Colette, A Trilogy, Three Vols. New York, Columbia University Press, 2001. Hannah Arendt, Life as a Narrative. Toronto, University of Toronto Press, 2001. Hatred and Forgiveness. New York, Columbia University Press, 2010. The Severed Head, Capital Visions. New York, Columbia University Press, 2011. Marriage is a Fine Art with Philippe Sollers. New York, Columbia University Press, 2016. Other books on Julia Kristeva, Irene Ivancheva Merjanska, Ecrie dans la langue de l'autre. Asia Jur et Julia Kristeva. Paris, Larmatin, 2015. Jennifer Radin, The Nature of Melancholy, From Aristotle to Kristeva, Oxford University Press, 2000. Megan Becker Lecran, Julia Kristeva and Literary Theory, Palgrave Macmillan, 2005. Sarah Beardsworth, Julia Kristeva, Psychoanalysis and Modernity, SUNY Press, 2004, 2006 Goethe Award Psychoanalytic Scholarship, finalist for the best book published in 2004, Kelly Ives, Julia Kristeva, Art, Love, Melancholy, Philosophy, Semiotics and Psychoanalysis, Crescent Moon Publishing Edition, 2010. Kelly Oliver, Ethics, Politics, and Difference in Julia Kristeva's Writing, Routledge Edition, 1993. Kelly Oliver, Reading Kristeva, Unraveling the Double Bind, Indiana University Press, 1993. John Lecht, Maria Margaroni, Julia Kristeva, Live Theory, Continuum International Publishing Group Limited, 2005. Noel McAfee, Julia Kristeva, Routledge, 2003. Griselda Pollock Guest Editor Julia Kristeva 1966-1996, Parallax Issue 8, 1998. Anna Smith, Julia Kristeva, Readings of Exile and Estrangement, Palgrave Macmillan, 1996. David Crownfield, Body, Text in Julia Kristeva, Religion, Women, and Psychoanalysis, State University of New York Press, 1992. Topic novels The Samurai, a novel. New York, Columbia University Press, 1992. The Old Man and the Wolves. New York, Columbia University Press, 1994. Possessions, a novel. New York, Columbia University Press, 1998. Murder in Byzantium. New York, Columbia University Press, 2006. Teresa, My Love, An Imagined Life of the Saint of Avila. New York, Columbia University Press, 2015. Topic see also topic Notes topic External links Official website Holberg Prize interview with Julia Kristeva in Experliner magazine Julia Kristeva, a bibliography by Eline Volek Goodno, Catherine J. 2015. Kristeva in Focus, From Theory to Film Analysis Bergen Books.